My name is Jason. I'm originally from California, and now I'm living in beautiful China. And today with me is Bebe. Yes, hi. This is Bebe from Beijing. I am so excited. I'm so excited <laughs> today too. Today we have a very special guest, Eric Solheim, the former UN Environment Executive Director and Under Secretary General of the United Nations. He held combined portfolio of Norway's Minister of the Environment and International Development from 2005 to 2007, and served as the Minister of International. Development. He is the president of the Green Belt and Road Institute. Please welcome Eric Solheim. Hello, sir. Hello, Nihao Beijing, Nihao Wuhan. <laughs> Great to be with both of you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mr. Solheim. Um, it's uh, we're so honored to have you on the show. Thank you for taking the time. And uh, Jason has about like what only thirty questions lined up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited uh, to talk to. You know, we talk about the environment a lot on our show. So mm. to have an expert like you on the show is it's just a really great honor. So you worked specifically in the environmental aspect. In what way, what kind of projects did you work on while you were working with the United Nations? We worked on the kind of triple environment crisis mm -hmm. uh, of our time, uh, the pollution, which is affecting people's lives mm -hmm. uh, in cities and, uh, and all, all, all over the planet. I mean, Pollution is killing a lot more people than wars or basically mm. any other, mm. uh, any other or any disease. So it's a huge problem. Uh, climate change we're all aware of. The world is, or the planet is getting warmer. Uh, and the third is the destruction of nature. Uh, how to restore ecosystems, uh, protect uh, the coral reefs or the rainforests or the. Uh, the mangroves, or so whatever ecosystem it's in, it's, it's mm. in peril. You're currently the president of the Green Belt and Road Institute. Would you tell us a little bit about that, sir? Absolutely. I mean, uh, as you are aware, Belt and Road is by far the biggest investment scheme mm. uh, in our era. In the past, it was uh, far too much about coal. I mean, I was promoting coal investments in many parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Last year, Pre President Xi made a very critical decision and said that China will stop all overseas coal investment. Mm. And that, that, of course, will mean that the entire uh, industrial system of China, uh, and all, but also the demand from countries, whether it's Pakistan or, or Indonesia or Kenya or South Africa, what, what nation will be to focus fully on solar and wind and green hydrogen. Mm. Uh, so Belt and Road now has an enormous opportunity to be a vehicle for green development uh, in the world. I mean, 130 countries are now, in one way or the other, involved with Belt and Road, so it's nearly all countries in the world. It's a huge program mm. and it, we, we help make it green. So your institute, are you an advisory committee or in what way does the Green Belt and Road Institute uh, help these projects uh, choose green initiatives? We have worked from two main angles. One is to set standards in China and we have developed a, a green light system, which basically says that this is solar, this is green, it's, please go ahead. Uh, this uh, is uh, hydropower, it's yellow, I mean, it, it may be good, but mm. please look into all the, uh, all the environment impacts before you get started, or this is coal, it's red, red this should be avoided. Mm. And of course, the same with, say, railroads or mm. roads. Uh, we need more railroads and we need, need more roads in the world, but you need other passes or underground, uh, uh, underpasses for, for wildlife. And you need to make the railroad and the road in such a way that the destruction of nature is as limited as super hard possible. I noticed that on your website, there are a lot of uh, experts that work with your institution. Uh, so is it primarily in an advisory capacity as experts or do they go to these projects and see them for themselves? Yeah, that, that's of course what we want to see in the future. Everything has been a little bit slow because of COVID, as I think everyone can uh, understand. Mm. Mm. The work in China itself has, I have to say, that has gone perfectly well during COVID. And there's been a huge progress in setting these standards for for Chinese business and state-owned enterprises for what, what green uh, investment actually means. Mm -hmm. uh, but the work, work with the recipient countries, I mean, the Indonesia, so Philippines, or Kazakhstan, so this world, that has been much slower because of COVID, because we because want these nations to mm. ask China uh, for the right investments. Uh, if Indonesia asks for solar or wind or green hydrogen or railroads, they will mm -hmm. get that from, from China. Uh, in the past, they tended to ask for coal, and then they got that for, from China. I mean, la la last year, for instance, the China Laos railroad was open, and it's an enormous uh, positive development for Laos. A landlocked country can be mm -hmm. connected to the international rail system. Mm -hmm. Fantastic for Laos, and, and it seems to be a pretty green railroad. And in Indonesia, China is now constructing the Bandung uh, Jakarta railroad, and 
my hope is that that can be can go all the way to Surabaya, so it will be a Trans Java railroad. This is a very heavily populated area, perfect for railroads as as China itself.